Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School Hour at Cornerstone Baptist Church. This lesson is for April 5th, 2020. It's a lesson from the life of Abraham. We've been in the, studying through the book of Genesis and we're in Genesis chapter 18. This particular application or lesson is titled, A Friend of God. A Friend of God. Let's read the scripture passage to, to begin with. Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. And the Lord appeared unto him, unto Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the, in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. And wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch you a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened unto, into the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd, and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter, and milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we have read this passage of Scripture, I pray, Lord, that you might speak to us from it this day. Lord, I pray that in this lesson there might be something of value, something of application to each and every listener of this video. Lord, I pray that you might um, um, minister to us uh, from these lessons of life of the life of Abraham. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Abraham is called a friend of God, three times in Scripture. In Second Chronicles, Jehoshaphat was faced with a, uh, a fierce enemy, uh, an enemy that was far beyond anything that they could humanly withstand. And Jehoshaphat, the king, stands before the people of Judah, and he prays uh, this prayer. He says, Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. We see the first example of this phrase, the friend of God. Abraham, thy friend. Abraham was a, a friend of God. James writes to us in James chapter 2, verse 23, uh, quoting Genesis 15, 6. Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. And then Isaiah writes, in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. You see, Abraham was God's friend, but God, see, God, I want to say, it was Abraham's friend, but Abraham also was God's friend. A friendship is always a mutual thing, a two-way activity. Abraham the friend of God, and God was a friend of Abraham. What does it mean when Abraham is called the friend of God? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines a friend as a person we know well and someone we are fond of. A person we know well and someone we are fond of. You see, there are, there are different elements of a friendship. Uh, one of the elements is companionship. Um, friendship always involves companionship someone we can be close to, someone we can um, um, do things with <laughs> and uh, can share in our, our joys and share in our, our, our troubles as well. Companionship is part of friendship. Communication is part of friendship as well. Our friends talk to each other. Uh, it may not be in person. It may have to be over the phone. Uh, it may be through the mail. Uh, it may be in prayer. Friends talk to each other. Our friends have compassion 
for one another. If, if we know that a friend of ours has, has a problem, uh, we'll do anything we can to help them in that trouble. Uh, friends have communication. Friends have companionship. Friends have compassion toward one another. Abraham was a friend of God. How did he come to be called a friend of God? Uh, to my knowledge, he's the only person in Scripture who's called a friend of God. Uh, no doubt uh, many uh, uh, Old Testament um, men and women were friends of God. Uh, but why was Abraham specifically called a friend of God? Uh, Genesis chapter 18 helps explain why uh, this phrase came to be applied to Abraham. Uh, we see the very, very familiar and in intimate way that Abraham entertains his guests. His, he converses with his heavenly guests uh, around the dinner table. We see Abraham, perhaps, uh, perhaps he fired up the grill, and we see him there grilling some steaks, and then enjoying a meal of steaks and butter sauce and milk, warm milk and, and fresh bread uh, with his friends under the tree. Uh, we see the ebb and flow of conversation as uh, Abraham and his friends no doubt talk about a great deal of things, uh, but then at the end of our scripture passage, uh, the conversation turns to Sarah, uh, who's in the tent. This meeting, you see, in Genesis chapter 18 was no chance encounter. Uh, it wasn't just by um, um, uh, because the Lord happened to be passing by on his way to Sodom uh, that he stops by Abraham's tent. No, this was a meeting that was planned from before the beginning of time. No chance encounter. The Lord of the universe, no doubt, uh, was quite busy that day. <laughs> there's probably, it's a big world after all. Uh, there's lots of uh, people in need. Uh, it's a big universe. And there's lots of things that need attending to and uh, uh, things that need to be held together and kept from flying apart. Uh, and our Lord, no doubt, uh, is always busy, but he always has time to be a friend. He had time for Abraham, time to just sit down and, and enjoy a meal uh, with his friend Abraham. You see, this meeting had been planned in advance, but the meeting really, in a sense, had not much to do with Abraham, at least in the beginning. Uh, the reason why the Lord stopped by Abraham's tent uh, wasn't Abraham. He stops by, as we will see, uh, because he wanted to speak to Sarah. Uh, nevertheless, uh, let's look at the events of that day as they unfolded. First of all, in your outlines, and if you don't have an outline, I encourage you to, to pause this video and take a moment to print one out. Uh, but point one, Abraham's expectation. Abraham's expectation it says in the scripture that he was waiting. It says in verse 1, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he, that is Abraham, sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Eastern hospitality dictated that uh, travelers should be uh, given a meal and a, and a place of lodging, if that was appropriate. Uh, food and lodging should be provided to travelers. Uh, there weren't holiday inns on uh, every street corner. Uh, there wasn't any place for a traveler to stay in those days, except for in the tent of a friend. A tent, and Abraham's tent was on a major trade route, a north-south trade route that in, the, in those days that went out of Egypt, went up north into Syria. And Abraham, no doubt, had many visitors that came by. So Abraham was waiting in expectation, uh, sitting there in the heat of the day. It perhaps wasn't the at the prime time for guests to stop by. Um, perhaps it would be more likely they would stop by in the evening at the end of their travels, but uh, nevertheless these guests were passing by in the middle of the day and Abraham was there uh, waiting for them, uh, waiting to show hospitality, waiting for an opportunity perhaps to uh, share the love of God, to share the gospel with the visitors. What an opportunity Abraham had sitting there in his tent door. He was waiting, but he was also watching. Verse 2, says he lift up his eyes and looked. Abraham lift up his eyes and looked. Abraham had an expectation. Perhaps today there could be a traveler who might need assistance. Uh, though it was warm, and though no doubt Abraham had other things he could have been doing, Abraham was waiting and he was watching. There's an application there just in this introductory part for us today. Abraham was waiting and watching. Christians are exhorted to do the same. Christians, first of all, ought to be on the watch for sin, watchful against sin. Our Lord said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, 
watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Sin, in a sense, uh, waits just outside our door. We ought to be watching for it, not giving it an opportunity. Uh, we ought to be waiting for the Savior, watching against sin, waiting for the Savior. Our Lord said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. We ought to, Christians ought to be watching against sin. They ought to be waiting for the Savior. Abraham's expectation was that perhaps he would have some visitors today. His entertainment, Abraham's entertainment, verse 2. It says, he, when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. We see, first of all, his haste. Abraham's haste. He ran to meet them from the tent door. Abraham ran. <laughs> Imagine that. Abraham was 99 years old. Now, I've worked, uh, we have a Bible study we lead in an assisted living facility, my wife and I. And uh, we've seen some, uh, uh, not any men, but we've seen some ladies who are well into their 90s. Uh, uh, they were not running. Uh, they do not run. Uh, they're, if they're fortunate, they're able to walk on their own. Uh, most of them need some assistance. Uh, Abraham here ran. Despite his physical limitations, he ran in haste to meet his guests. Uh, despite his position as patriarch of his household, uh, perhaps it would seem undignified to his servants to see their, uh, their patriarch running uh, to meet these guests. And yet Abraham had no shame about that whatsoever. Uh, I said in a, a couple of Sunday school lessons earlier that I believe that the Lord perhaps, uh, with speculation on my part, but perhaps the Lord was turning back the aging clock on Abraham and Sarah, uh, turning back the dial uh, so they could have children again. It says Abraham uh, was, was dead in his body and Sarah as well. And yet now, perhaps we see some evidence of that because Abraham is running uh, uh, to meet his guests, his haste. Uh, his humility says at the end of uh, verse 2, when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Abraham's great humility. Who were these visitors? Well, the scriptures already informed us. It was the Lord. Verse 1 says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And that word Lord there in Hebrew is the word Yahweh, also translated Jehovah, the covenant God of Israel. Yahweh or Jehovah met Abraham. Abraham, uh, from the context, recognizes the heavenly nature of his visitors. Uh, for he dresses his visitors as my Lord, verse 3. Abraham, and he said, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Uh, that word Lord in verse 3 is Adonai, often used for deity, uh, and is capitalized in the King James, my Lord, because the translators there recognize that Abraham was referring to uh, these visitors as, as not just um, uh, important visitors, but as his Lord and Savior. The creator of the universe, from the context, it's clear that Abraham here, at this point in time, entertained not just the Lord, but two angels as well. Two angels and the creator of the universe stopped by Abraham's tent. I'm sure glad our Lord isn't too busy to spend time with each and every one of us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2 is often used to speak of this passage. Uh, Hebrews 13, 2 speaks about entertaining angels unawares, uh, but clearly that's not the case here. Abraham is aware of the uh, divine nature of his heavenly visitors. Uh, they are angels and, and the creator of the universe. Abraham, by his very example, uh, teaches us a lesson in reverence in the presence of God. We observe, first of all, his expectation. Abraham expected uh, that the Lord would speak to him. Secondly, we see Abraham's profound reverence, humility, and awe in the presence of God. He bowed himself to the ground. And thirdly, we see Abraham's haste to make sure that everything was ready. And we'll see him hastening all over the place in just a minute. This, you see, was no ordinary meeting. But by application, no meeting of God's people is an ordinary meeting. Uh, providentially, we've been, as a congregation, have been uh, 
not permitted to meet uh, together for a time. Uh, and yet, in the future, there's coming a day when we will be able to meet again. And when we do so, we should recognize it's no ordinary meeting. Uh, when two or three are gathered together, the Lord is present in our midst. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves uh, in, for the presence of the Lord. We have to take time to repair, even as Abraham did. Uh, there ought to be, first of all, an expectation when God's people meet together, an expectation that the Lord will speak to us. And that expectation ought to begin on Saturday evening as we begin to anticipate the day to come. Uh, we get our materials ready, our Bible out, our uh, notebook, our, uh, pick out our clothes, uh, make sure we get to bed early, uh, because there's an expectation that in the morning uh, the Lord will meet with us. We have to come in reverence, uh, preparing ourselves uh, to meet with the Lord, uh, making sure that uh, we've uh, spent time with the Lord in prayer before we arrive at church, uh, making sure that we are coming in reverence. The things that uh, perhaps uh, would distract us from the Lord have been set aside uh, for that time being. Uh, we have to make haste to make sure everything's in its proper place and order. Uh, as we come into the sanctuary, there ought to be an expectation the Lord will speak to us today. Abraham's um, expectation was waiting and watching his entertainment. We see his haste as he made ready. Uh, we see his humility. And then we see his hospitality. In verse 4, Abraham said, Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. And wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. His example. Abraham personally takes charge of the meal preparations. Um, the ladies here will say, what a guy, what a guy. Abraham uh, begins to make uh, uh, everything ready for his guests. It says in verse 5, he fetched. He did personally did most of the work. Verse 5, he fetched. Uh, verse 6, he hastens. Uh, verse 7, uh, Abraham runs again. He fetches, he hastens. Uh, verses, verse 8, he stood by. Abraham not only places himself in a servant's uh, position, he also did a servant's work. Verse 5, And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come unto your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. Abraham's faith, you see, is a faith that works. A faith that works. James wrote in chapter 2, verse 17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Abraham's hospitality is example, first of all, and then his exhortation. In verse 6, he gives directions to Sarah. Abraham hastened unto the tent, into the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. He gives some directions here to Sarah. Uh, we have guests, Sarah. Uh, quick, I want you to make some homemade bread. That really great homemade bread you love to make. Uh, Sarah here, uh, no doubt, was busy doing some other things. Uh, she responds promptly without complaint or criticism. Why, we might ask. We might also ask, why not? Why not? Abraham here had led by example, taking responsibility, first of all, for most of the work. As Sarah is more than willing to follow her husband's example in getting the bread ready for their guests. Abraham's expectation, Abraham's entertainment. But now we see Sarah's ear. Sarah's here. Verse 9. And they said, well, so Abraham takes the, the this, let's, read, let's read verse 7. And Abraham ran unto the herd, fetched a calf, tender and good, gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. He took butter and milk and the calf, which he had dressed, and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. Uh, our Lord here, <laughs> our Lord, the creator of the universe here, uh, takes time with Abraham, uh, perhaps to enjoy a, a grilled steak. Imagine that, the creator of the universe, uh, eating a steak. We learn later in the New Testament that our Lord ate some fish as well. Uh, you know, my wife and I uh, kind of splurged after I, uh, I received my, uh, after I accepted my new job at uh, uh, teaching at Luther Rice Seminary. Uh, got my first paycheck. It wasn't a big paycheck, uh, but we took it out and, and splurged and, and sort of blew most of it at Perry's Steakhouse. Now, perhaps you've been to Perry's Steakhouse. It's a kind of expensive place, but boy, 
they have good steaks. <laughs> they have great steaks. I really enjoyed that uh, steak dinner. I'm sure our Lord here has enjoyed his dinner with Abraham. Uh, a grilled steak, warm butter, warm milk, uh, and fresh homemade bread. What a meal. Our Lord and his angels had arrived. But now we have the reason why they came. Uh, verse 9. One of the reasons, I should say. But the very first reason. They said unto him, unto Abraham, Where is Sarah, thy wife? Uh, Sarah's ear, point three in your outline. Sarah's ear. First of all, Sarah was near. She was in the tent. Uh, remember, Abraham had been sitting in the door of the tent. Uh, but now he's under the tree. Uh, it says in verse uh, 8, uh, he stood by them under the tree. Uh, so there was a tree uh, um, where they had a, a table set up. And Abraham and his guests are enjoying their meal. Uh, but Sarah is nearby in the tent. The tent wasn't very far from the tree. Uh, amen. <laughs> Sarah was within earshot. Uh, it was not by chance that Sarah was in earshot. Uh, our Lord and his two heavenly angels had arrived just for this very moment to address Sarah specifically. Custom, you see, dictated that they could not speak with Sarah directly. Custom dictated they could not speak with her directly. Uh, so they spoke to her indirectly. They said, where is Sarah, thy wife? You know, I was, uh, uh, some years ago on a business trip, I was in Germany in Stuttgart, and I was waiting uh, for my flight to return uh, to, to the States. And I was a little bit early at the airport, and I was sitting in the airport uh, reading my Bible and uh, looking up some scripture passages. I was sitting on a little bench there, and the, you know how airports are. They're very busy and crowded, and there's a hullabub uh, of noise uh, going on. Uh, but it was all in a language I could not speak. Uh, Stuttgart, uh, was, of course, many people were speaking German there. Uh, but also there was a great deal of people uh, going to Pakistan uh, and uh, a lot of traffic there. And so I heard people speaking in uh, um, Pakistani and uh, German and all sorts of other languages. And all it was was noise in my ears. It was kind of like a, a dull roar as I was reading through scriptures. When all of a sudden I heard these voices, uh, clear as a bell, I heard these voices. Someone says, I tell you, there ain't no McDonald's here. You know, and boy, my ears, they perked up my little antenna because I recognize that language, uh, more or less. I tell you, there ain't no McDonald's here. I looked up and there's uh, this, this family walking by uh, up above us. And sure enough, there wasn't any McDonald's there. But uh, they were right. But my ear picked that out of all that noise. Uh, no doubt Sarah was in the tent. And, and, and she's... It's not too far from the table. And the conversation is going on and off and things like this. And she's busy doing some things uh, in the tent. And it's just kind of a you know, background noise. When all of a sudden, she hears this word, Sarah. Where is Sarah, thy wife? You know, and you know how your ear kind of perks, picks up when you hear your name mentioned? Sarah's ear <laughs> kind of perked up when she heard her name. Uh, she was near... And now she was, she was known of the Lord. Uh, the Lord knew her name. Uh, of course, the Lord gave her her name, <laughs> Sarah. He, says, he said to Abraham, your wife, Sarai, should no, be, no longer be called Sarai, but now Sarah, no longer a princess, but now the princess. The Lord knew her name. The Lord knew her occupation. Our Lord knew her location as well. He asks here, where is Sarah, thy wife? Our Lord already knew exactly where she was. Uh, this word, this, this phrase was intended for Sarah's ear. Uh, so she would uh, perk up her ear and she would listen to what's being said. Uh, she was near, she was known, but she was also drawn. And here she hears her name. She says, what are they saying about me? And she draws near to the door of the tent and maybe sticks her ear out <laughs> of the tent flap. I don't know. Um, Sarah Hearing her name spoken is drawn to listen. Uh, it says, uh, our Lord said in John chapter 6, 40, verse 44, No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him. And here the Lord begins to draw Sarah to himself, first of all, by mentioning her name. Uh, she's drawn 
Uh, she's drawn to listen uh, for a purpose, a purpose that she would hear the word of God personally. Uh, she's heard the word of God relayed to her by Abraham. Abraham has no doubt told Sarah, uh, I had this vision and, and here's what the Lord said. And your name now should be not Sarai, but Sarah, because you're not going to be just a princess, but a prince, the princess, uh, a mother of kings. Uh, of nations. Uh, Lord, the Lord's promised me you'll have a son. Uh, Sarah had heard the word of the Lord, but now she hears it personally. Personally, verse 10, the Lord said, remember Sarah's ears poking out of that tent flap. Verse 10, and he, the Lord said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. It says, and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Uh, that she might hear the word of God personally. Uh, the Lord had spoken this word that she might hear it personally. He had spoken it that she might come to a personal faith in the Lord. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I believe Sarah, from all, we haven't heard a lot about Sarah, but I believe from the passage that we just read, and what we will study next week, that this is where Sarah comes to a personal faith a knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the scripture in Hebrews 11, 11 uh, says that through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Through faith. It says Sarah was a woman of faith. Sarah had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. How did she get that faith? Well, there was a time... <laughs> In, in her life when she believed. I believe that moment is just about, or just around the corner in, in the latter part of Genesis chapter 18, that she might conceive by faith. That was the reason why the Lord came here, that, the, that Sarah might conceive by faith. Hebrews 11, 11, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Uh, we'll see next week that Sarah wasn't quite yet at a point of faith, but that would soon change. That would soon change. The Lord had come for a specific purpose to speak to Sarah. Let's return, though, to our theme. Abraham, a friend of God. Abraham was a friend of God, and God was a friend of Abraham's. We need to ask a question. How about you? Are you God's friend? Are you God's friend? Do you have companionship? with your creator, the creator of, with your own personal creator, the creator of the universe, but the one who created you personally for a purpose. Do you have companionship with him? Is there communication between you and the Lord? Uh, we call that prayer. Is there communication between you and the Lord? Well, prayer, I should say, is when I speak, when you speak to the Lord, but is the Lord speaking to you? Are you listening to what the Lord's saying to you in this time? Have you been a recipient of God's compassion? And have you shared our Lord's compassion with others? These indeed are difficult times. And perhaps some are, certainly, some are more isolated than others. Uh, some perhaps are almost by themselves, yet not by themselves, because we have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham was a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Is God your friend? Are you God's friend? There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In these times in which we live, uh, let's take time uh, to learn more about our friend, to commune more with our friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to be attuned to what he has to say to us in this time. Let's look to our Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, as we conclude this Sunday School lesson, I pray that uh, this lesson might be of help to each of us. Uh, we thank you that you take time, have taken time, and continue to take time with each one of us, Lord, to minister to our needs, uh, to be a friend, indeed, uh, to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that we might be a friend uh, to you as well, that we might um, make uh, a, our relationship with our Lord a priority. There might be a time that we spend listening uh, to you, searching your word uh, for direction in these days in which we live. Lord, I pray if there be one in our midst who doesn't know you as their Savior, that they might put their faith and trust in you this very day. 
I pray that for those who do know you as your Savior, that there might be a growing relationship um, as, we, as we do our part uh, to keep the channels of communication and compassion and companionship open. I pray now that uh, all the said and done this very day might be to the honor, praise, and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen.